Hello again, uh, grade 4. So last time we talked about uh, how to be healthy. And then this time, we will go to your book. This one. So in your book, the strand 1 or the unit 1, the first topic that we have is about human growth and development. So at your age, a lot of changes happen. So when you were in grade 2, you have a low pitch voice, like, teacher! Okay, and then right now, your voice is a little bit uh, round, as we can say, or heavy, or let us say, it changed the pitch or the tone of your voice. If Before, you're like, teacher! And then now you're like, teacher! Teacher, where, where am I going to answer my book? What page? So you're already in on that stage. So every year, there's always development or changes on how the way you grow. Okay? For example, your voice, your face. Before, you are a little bit chubby cheeks. Like really chubby and then now it becomes a little bit your face become long, still chubby, but you're growing, okay? Like, uh, the same as Kong. Kong before is short and big, but now Kong is tall. And the face is also getting like um, a man, okay? It changed, become handsome, okay? So the moment that you grow up, it changes especially when you are in matayom so girls you're already doing your makeup your eyebrow needs to be white needs to be beautiful all the time so when you were in grade two you don't even care yeah you even put your booger and then throw it out anywhere okay so everything's changed every time our body changes also our weight and height and how the way we eat so this time you're going to make um, a test body test so as I told you before you are going to write down everything about yourself okay so the next uh, slideshow that I'm gonna show to you is about your physical development and your body check okay so students, this picture show about Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Uh, Piaget is a scientist studying about the cognitive development of human. Cognitive means it's about the relationship of our brain and how the way we think and how the way we respond. So that's the meaning of cognitive development. So it means to say it has stages on how the way we comprehend or how the way we understand everything that happen in our life in every stages so we have from birth to two years two years to seven years old and seven years old to 11 years old and then 12 years old until up so we have four stages of development so i will show this to you in a video so this picture is about the theory from uh, the scientist named eric erickson so it's a stage eight stages of psychosocial development it is about human behaviors towards uh, social development about uh, about peers and with friends and in the community so he has eight stages of development it's also started from toddler it means to say when we were a baby until we grow very old until death so the explanation of these eight stages, I will still going to show it to you through video. So please watch the next video. Piaget's theory argues that we have to conquer four stages of cognitive development. First, the sensory motor stage. Second, the pre-operational stage. Third, the concrete operational stage. And fourth, the formal operational stage. Only once we have gone through all the stages, at what age can vary, we are able to reach full human intelligence. 1. The sensory motor stage, ages birth to 2. 
In the sensory motor stage, we develop through experiences and movement our five senses. Our brain wants to see, hear, smell, taste and touch as much as possible. First, we start with simple reflexes and soon after we develop our first habits. From four months old, we become aware of things beyond our own body and then as we get older, we learn to do things intentionally. A key milestone is the development of working memory, or in Piaget terms, our realization of object permanence. Before that, our mom can show and then hide a teddy and we would think it's gone. After, we understand that objects continue to exist even when we can't see them. We start becoming curious about everything. We want to smell flowers, taste food, listen to sounds and talk to strangers. To explore more, we move. We learn to sit, crawl, stand, walk and even to run. This increased physical mobility consequently leads to increased cognitive development. But we remain egocentric, meaning we can perceive the world only from our own point of view. 2. The pre-operational stage, ages 2 to 7. Our thinking is mainly categorized through symbolic functions and intuitive thoughts. We have lots of fantasies and believe objects are alive. As we are not able to apply specific cognitive operations, Piaget calls this stage pre-operational. We learn to speak and understand that words, images and gestures are symbols for something else. When we draw our family, we are not concerned about drawing each person to scale, but rather with their symbolic meanings. We love to play pretend, which allows us to experience something new and learn a lot. At around age four, most of us become very curious and ask many questions. We want to know everything. We can call it the birth of primitive reasoning. Piaget calls it the intuitive age, because while we realize that we have a vast amount of knowledge, we have no idea how we acquired it. Our thinking in this stage is still pretty egocentric. We think others see the world like we do and still don't understand that they see it differently. 3. The Concrete Operational Stage, ages 7 to 11 We finally discover logic and we develop concrete cognitive operations, such as sorting objects in a certain order. One example of this is inductive reasoning, which means that if we see someone eating a cookie, we can draw a conclusion and then make a generalization. And we now get the concept of conservation, we understand that if we pour orange juice from a normal glass to a taller one, the amount stays the same. Our younger sister will pick the taller glass, thinking she gets more. By the same logic, we only now can understand that if 3 plus 5 equals 8, then 8 minus 3 must equal 5. Our brain learns to rearrange our thoughts, to classify and build concrete operational mental structures. For example, we now know that we can reverse an action by doing the opposite. Excited by our new mental abilities, we apply them in conversations, activities, when we learn to write and in school. As a result, we get to know ourselves better. We begin to understand that our thoughts and feelings are unique and not necessarily those of others. That means that we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. 4. The Formal Operational Stage, age 12 plus Once we become teenagers, we become formally operational. We now have the ability to think more rationally about abstract concepts and hypothetical events. Our advanced cognitive abilities allow us to understand abstract concepts such as success and failure, love and hate we form a deeper understanding of our own identity and our morality. We now also think that we understand why people behave the way they behave and as a result can become more compassionate. Our brain can now do deductive reasoning, which means we can compare two statements and reach a logical generalization. 
our new mental skills allow us to plan our life systematically and prioritize, and we can make assumptions about events that have no necessary relation to reality. We can now also philosophize and just think about thinking itself. Our new sense for our identity now also creates egocentric thoughts, and some start to see an imaginary audience watching them all the time. Piaget believed in lifelong learning, but insisted that the formal operational stage is the final stage of our cognitive development. Jean Piaget's first interests were animals, and he published his first scientific paper on albino sparrows in 1907, when he was just 11 years old. In 1920, he began working with standardized intelligence tests. He realized that younger children consistently make types of mistakes that older children do not. He concluded that they must think differently and spent the rest of his life studying the intellectual development of children. Erickson's theory of psychosocial development identifies eight stages which a healthy individual should pass through from birth to death. At each stage, we encounter different needs, ask new questions, and meet people who influence our behavior and learning. Stage 1. Basic trust versus mistrust. As infants, we ask ourselves if we can trust the world, and we wonder if it's safe. We learn that if we can trust someone now, we can also trust others in the future. If we experience fear, we develop doubt and mistrust. The key to our development is our mother. Stage 2. Autonomy versus Shame and Doubt In our early childhood, we experience ourselves and discover our body. We ask, is it okay to be me? If we are allowed to discover ourselves, then we develop self-confidence. If we are not, we can develop shame and self-doubt. Both parents now play a major role. Stage 3. Initiative versus Guilt In preschool, we take initiative, try out new things, and learn basic principles like how round things roll. We ask, is it okay for me to do what I do? If we are encouraged, we can follow our interests. If we are held back or told that what we do is silly, we can develop guilt. We are now learning from the entire family. Stage 4. Industry versus Inferiority Now we discover our own interests and realize that we are different from others. We want to show that we can do things right. We ask if we can make it in this world. If we receive recognition from our teachers or peers, we become industrious, which is another word for hard-working. If we get too much negative feedback, we start to feel inferior and lose motivation. Our neighbors and schools now influence us the most. Stage 5. Identity versus Role Confusion During adolescence, we learn that we have different social roles. We are friends, students, children, and citizens. Many experience an identity crisis. If our parents now allow us to go out and explore, we can find identity. If they push us to conform to their views, we can face role confusion and feel lost. Key to our learning are our peers and role models. Stage 6. Intimacy versus Isolation As young adults, we slowly understand who we are and we start to let go of the relationships we had built earlier in order to fit in. We ask ourselves if we can love. If we can make a long-term commitment, we are confident and happy. If we cannot form intimate relationships, we might end up feeling isolated and lonely. Our friends and partners are now central to our development. Stage 7. Generativity versus Stagnation when we reach our 40s, we become comfortable, use our leisure time creatively, and maybe begin contributing to society. Our concern is generativity. If we think that we are able to lead the next generation into this world, we are happy. 
If we did not resolve some conflicts earlier, we can become pessimistic and experience stagnation. People at home and at work are now who influences the most. Stage 8. Ego Integrity versus Despair As we grow older, we tend to slow down and begin to look back over our lives. We ask, how have I done? If we think we did well, we develop feelings of contentment and integrity. If not, we can experience despair and become grumpy and bitter. Time to compare us with mankind. Eric Erickson was a German-American psychologist who, together with his wife Joan, became known for his work on psychosocial development. He was influenced by Sigmund and Anna Freud and became famous for coining the phrase identity crisis. Although Erickson lacked even a bachelor's degree, he served as a professor at Harvard and Yale. This video was made for us by MinuteVideos.com, who are doing everything to make awesome videos affordable. So, if you want to make your own video, please check out their website. If you tell them you came from Sprouts, they'll give you a 10% discount and they'll donate $50 for our next video, which would really help our channel. If you work in a company, why not use them for internal training? If you're a teacher or school, you can make your own lessons. Just go to minutevideos.com and order your video for as little as $600. Thank you for watching. Okay, so in your notebook, I would like you to copy this one. It's about hygiene checklist and physical development check. You need to write down your nickname, your age, your gender, if you are male or female, your height by centimeter, and your weight by kilogram. And then you need to write down what is your sports, the favorite sport you would like to do. So this activity I'm going to check when our school open next month. Okay. Thank you, student, for watching and listening. Have a nice day. Goodbye.